Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Paleo Myths. Over the past few years, we've covered some well-known subjects like Giganotosaurus size and pack hunting raptors, but so far none as long-lasting or as pervasive as this next one. The dodo, we've probably all heard of it or seen it somewhere in media. Since this flightless bird's discovery, it's become synonymous with being slow, fat, and idiotic, leading to the phrase, dumb as a dodo. Another common phrase is to go the way of the dodo, meaning to die off, highlighting the creature's supposed obsolescence. How do you find, ladies and gentlemen? Obsolete. 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 I concur. Although there's no certain origin for the name, one version of the story goes that even Dodo itself stems from a Portuguese word for fool, doido. Maybe the youths aren't using these terms in their daily vernacular, but we're all familiar with the idea. So that's what we're here to find out. Was the Dodo really a dumb animal? Are the centuries of slander justified? As we prepare to eat another goofy, ground-dwelling bird, let's look back on this relic of the past. Let's dig this up. Before we look at the potential stupidity of this creature, we have to first look at the context in which it lived. No one out of here is calling Tiktaalik dumb, even if it probably wasn't the brightest bulb in the light bulb storage closet. Sometimes you might see dodos depicted as Ice Age creatures who went extinct with the famous megafauna we all know and love. Shut up! Just shut up, you idiot! This really ain't it, man. The dodo once lived on a tropical island called Mauritius, out in the Indian Ocean. Being over a thousand kilometers from Madagascar and even further from the coast of mainland Africa, obviously no animal can simply walk in like they own the place. So how did these dodos get here? Well, like all flightless birds, they descended from flying ancestors, in this case being pigeons. A pigeon ancestry was suspected and then confirmed by recent DNA evidence. So these rat bird ancestors flew to Mauritius, then settled down with their rat bird families. With no predators to worry about, they had little need for the ability of flight, causing them to eventually evolve flightlessness. On the ground, Raphis cuculatus feasted on fruits and nuts, and joined their goofy fruity lives with little disturbance. Without much competition and lots to gorge on, these birds grew to a respectable two and a half feet tall and nearly 40 pounds, the big chungus of pigeons if you will. The dodos lived in harmony until the Fire Nation attacked. Dutch sailors arrived on Mauritius in 1598, spelling doom for our supposedly obsolete losers. Being fat, ground-dwelling, and stupid, explorers were able to make easy meals of dodos. According to the myth, all they had to do was walk up to one, bonk them on the head, and then bust out the deep fryer. Just two were enough to fill up your entire crew. They give your meat a good old rub. Hot and spicy meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. It's thought that being dumb led to the dodo's imminent demise. They were too stupid to survive, and you could possibly even say they deserved to die. All this causing them to be overhunted to extinction. Why shouldn't the Dutch take these free meals? Homies gotta eat too. Is there any truth to this dough? Was the dodo just too dumb to live? What does the actual evidence say? One of the biggest hoops for today's myth is semantics. How are we defining the word dumb? What is the general population implying when they say dumb? Are we using the biblical terminology for being unable to speak? Probably not. Is it just a synonym for being stupid? Sure, but stupid compared to what? If compared to humans, then pretty much all other animals fall into this category, so dodos were nothing special. Compared to all other animals? All other birds, maybe? This is why, when writing paleomyths, I try to stick with ideas that are quantifiable, or possible behaviors that did or did not happen. Here, we're stuck trying to determine what it means to be dumb. My viewers and I can agree on all the same evidence, but having different answers based on how we define the term. With such vagueness, I'm gonna try to bring some specificity here. Was the dodo dumb compared to other animals in similar niches and similar ecosystems? 
The answer to that may surprise you because it's a resounding no. With such limited information from sailors hundreds of years ago, it's difficult to tell the exact intelligence of today's subject. Even in the present, we're still discovering new information on the intelligence of extant animals. Clearly, there's still so much that we don't know or can't confirm about the dodo. Like a mediocre J.J. Abrams movie, we have many mysteries, yet only a few answers. However, in 2016, a group of scientists did create a 3D endocast of the dodo's brain. With this, experts can directly study the size and shape of this bird brain, and what they found wasn't out of the ordinary for pigeons, being relatively about the same size. This is a good place to be in regards to intellect. Though there are no corvids, pigeons are still widely considered to be highly intelligent animals. Our beloved rat birds are packing some serious brain power beneath their goofy exterior. With strong memories, amazing visual acuity, the ability to complete complex tasks, excellent navigation, and they even pass the mirror vibe check by recognizing themselves. It's possible the dodo could have possessed similar smarts. Now, brain to body mass estimates aren't the best at determining intelligence, but without much else to go off of yet, they're a decent place to start. Interestingly enough, one major difference in the brain is a larger olfactory bulb in the extinct ground-dwelling guys, indicating a heightened sense of smell, which isn't very common in birds. If all this is true, then why did the Dutch make such easy meals of them if they weren't that stupid? Well, this is due to a phenomenon that isn't unique to dodos, but actually affects several island-dwelling or isolated animals. It's called island tameness. When a species is geographically isolated from predators for a long period of time, their skittishness decreases because, well, what's the point? There's nothing to be afraid of, so why waste energy running from nothing? Humans can come into closer contact with them, and more often, since their aversion to potentially dangerous land animals is greatly reduced. We see this today in creatures like the Kuoka, a small marsupial from southwest Australia and its surrounding islands. Common on Rottnest Island, these little friends are famous for their willingness to take selfies. If they survive 400 more years, maybe we'd have dodo selfies today. So their lack of fear wasn't due to a lack of intelligence, rather due to their isolation. Also, it is worth pointing out that the role of hunting in the dodo's extinction is overstated. They probably weren't hunted for their meat that much. From what we know of this early Thanksgiving snack, their meat was terrible. Being super tough and hard to digest, then when you're eating it, it's just a greasy mess. So because the Dutch sailors didn't actually enjoy eating dodo, they probably didn't do it too much. Be thankful you're eating turkey this week and not this nonsense. So then, if it wasn't a nitwit, why did these iconic land pigeons go extinct? Sure, humans hunting them for food was a factor, but certainly not the only or most important factor. As with most extinct animals, the dodo was well adapted to living in its environment. Problems arise when there's too much change in too little time for the creature to adapt, causing them to be relics of the past. It's a tale as old as time. Think Spinosaurus, Smilodon, the woolly mammoth. Each were extremely successful, top-tier pros in their environment, until it changed. These birds were well off on tropical Mauritius, isolated from predators, but with Dutch arrivals came even more dangerous passengers. The introduction of pigs, macaques, and rats off their ships was the dodo death knell. As large flightless birds, we think they laid a single large egg on the forest floor. Not a problem when there's no one ready to make an easy meal of them. Later, with these invasive species though, dodos were being spawn killed left and right. With such low rates of reproduction, and the eggs that were made getting decimated, it was only a short time before dodos bit the dust. Less than a century after the Dutch arrived, this fascinating creature disappeared from our planet sometime in the late 17th century. All this before scientists even knew about extinction, evolution by natural selection, and even dinosaurs. Hopefully, with our hundreds of years of research and mistakes to learn from, we can avoid repeating this disaster, saving species from the brink of extinction. Can humans reverse course, bringing endangered animals back to their former glories? 
Only time will tell. Anyways, let's close this one out. Since its discovery, the dodo bird has been memed on for its overindulgence and stupidity, even though we have Karens for that today. With centuries old evidence, modern research, and a bit of hindsight, can we still say the dodo was a dumb animal, even in its context? Did it go the way of the dodo for lacking intelligence? To me at least, it looks like we have to take this entire myth back to formula. Back to formula. <laughs> Intelligence and stupidity can be difficult to define, especially in the animal kingdom. What type of intellect is being valued? What are we comparing it to? Are our tests actually testing intelligence? We're navigating many nuanced questions here, but in the end, it seems like we're dealing with a fairly smart creature here with adaptations that weren't helpful for human contact. I'm only leaving the myth that back to formula, since I can possibly see an argument being made for why not quickly reacting to predators can be a form of stupidity. Not saying I would make that argument, but I can see it happening. Anyways, Dodo, your name is clear in my book. Sorry you were dunked on for so long. As for you guys at home, remember to please leave a like, subscribe, check out my social media, and for all my American friends, have a wonderful Thanksgiving.